the M1 13 inch MacBook Pro, which not to get confused with the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro, is a really iconic MacBook because it was one of the first MacBooks to feature the Apple Silicon chip. And it's also one of the last MacBooks to feature a highly controversial feature that some people absolutely loved and some people absolutely hate. But what I want to do is this laptop is almost four years old now. So I want to do a quick review as to how well it holds up in 2024 and kind of compare it to, to like the M1 MacBook Air, which is its brother that came out at the same time. Now, I want to start off by talking some of the main differences between this and the M1 MacBook Air. And the M1 13-inch MacBook Pro is typically around $150 to $200 more, but you do get some upgrades with that. You do get an extra GPU core, which gives you a little bit extra performance in different GPU intensive apps. You also get a CPU fan, so that does allow for a little bit more performance because it can kind of thermal throttle the chips. And then you do get an extra two hours of battery life, so battery life on this is a bit longer. And then, of course, it has this feature called the touch bar, which I'll get a little bit into that a bit later. But in general, it's going to kind of have the same similar look and feel that I get an M1 MacBook Air of just slightly better performance. Now, speaking of performance, I did some 1080p video editing this without any slowdowns, and I've been using the M1 MacBook Air as my main video editing laptop, and I haven't had any issues doing that, so I definitely assume the M1 Pro version of that is gonna you know fly through all that stuff like really really quickly also to load speeds for like apps and stuff I was able to open applications and browse the web and things loaded pretty much almost instantly uh, which is insane to think and those improvements to the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi chips that kind of makes a huge difference uh, when you definitely compare it to a laptop that's maybe five years older and then dabbling a little bit into work apps my dad actually use this computer for his business and he uses Microsoft Office. So he used this computer for a few months, you know, doing things in Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Outlook, and he did an upgrade to a 15 inch M2 MacBook Air just cause he wanted the extra screen size. But he definitely enjoyed this laptop over his Windows laptop in terms of how well performed with those types of applications and stuff. And then even though Macs aren't really considered gaming laptops, I was able to get pretty decent frame rates in some of the basic games that I typically play. Like an online game, Crunker.io, I was able to get like a smooth frame rate. I didn't notice really any lag or any issues with it. I also tried playing Minecraft 2 and I was getting a smooth 80 frames per second. I was on default settings, so just so you're aware of that. But you might even be able to run things like shaders and even some other, you know, little bit graphic intensive games on this. Uh, without any issues, which is pretty insane to think. And then of course, one of the main reasons people like this laptop too is battery life. So new, this gets about 20 hours maximum of battery life. However, because these are out for a few years and you're likely gonna be buying this used, you are gonna get a little bit less. You're probably gonna get around maybe 17 hours max battery life, which is still insanely good. And it's definitely gonna be enough to get you throughout the day and may even last you like two to three days if you just use this casually. But like in the general rundown, I would say performance wise, it's kind of similar to my M1 MacBook Air. It's just slightly better in every single way. Slightly better battery life, slightly better you know, processor performance, slightly better GPU performance. For some people that may not be worth the extra money. However, there's another reason too why some people like this laptop and it's worth the extra money for them. And that's some of the features with the design. And one of those features that people really care about is this thing called the touch bar. So what the touch bar is, is basically it's a little display on the top of your keyboard where typically it would show like the different function keys and stuff. But what it allows you to do is let's say you want to change something like the brightness, for example, right? Well, it's basically a little touch screen that you tap and then you use a slider to adjust the brightness or like the volume. But where it comes really handy for some people is there's different shortcuts you can do with certain applications. So like, let's say you need like to fill a cell in Excel. There's like a little shortcut to do that and just different things like that. Now, unfortunately, Apple retired this feature with their newer MacBooks, but this is one of the last MacBooks that has that, and that's why a lot of people still go out and buy these. And then typing on the keyboard on this is really comfortable to type on when you're writing papers and doing stuff like that. And it's definitely a huge improvement over the butterfly keyboard that was on these MacBooks a few years prior, but I would still recommend getting a keyboard protector for this just because these are still a really nice laptop and it's extremely hard and difficult to repair these keyboards. 
just because replacing these keyboards are hundreds of dollars. And at that point, you might as well just total the laptop. Looking around the size of the laptop, you'll notice flat edges on pretty much every side. So it doesn't have that wedge shape that the M1 MacBook Air has. And then on the left side, you have two USB-C ports. And then on the right side, you have a headphone jack. And that's pretty much it for ports. So if you need another port that's not on there, unfortunately, you are gonna have to get an adapter. But I don't notice it being too big of an issue because most stuff is switching to USB-C now. But if you do use USB accessories, definitely make sure you get a high quality adapter that will allow you to use those accessories. And then talking a little bit about this laptop's display, it basically has the same display that the M1 MacBook Air has. However, it is missing out on some newer features that I give the newer MacBooks. For example, the black border that goes around the display is a little bit thicker than what you get on like the M2 MacBook Air or even the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. And then the webcam is only a 720p webcam, which I guess is decent enough for online video conferencing. And then also, if you do wanna hook up an external monitor to this, Unfortunately, you can only hook up one external monitor. So just keep that in mind if you think you might use multiple monitors, is it gonna only hook up one external monitor of this? And then lastly, talking a little bit about storage, this has a base storage of 256 gigabytes, which I would say that's good enough for most people who are doing office work and stuff like that. However, if you are a video editor, I would highly recommend trying to find one more storage or gain external hard drives, just because that's gonna make your life a lot easier you're not gonna spend hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on buying a new MacBook with a lot of storage. But anyways, the M1 13-inch MacBook Pro is a really good laptop for people who like a little bit extra performance than what the M1 MacBook Air has, and they also really like that touch bar. However, if you're just a casual user and you don't really care about that stuff, you may just possibly be better off seeing the extra money of getting an M1 MacBook Air or potentially gain an M2 MacBook Air that'll last you a bit longer. But anyways, this is still a really good laptop, even in 2024. But let me know what do you guys think in the comments down below. And if you are curious too on what the current prices for this stuff are, I'll try to leave links in the description for that. Thank you guys for watching and goodbye.